Hey folks, welcome, welcome. Yes, you did see me throw this plate and I just wanted to put it back on the wheel now and make a little alteration. Um, yeah, my problem is that my, the bat that I'm gonna have to trim it on is bigger than it will allow me to sit in here because of the sides here. So I've got to raise it up. So, but before I do that, I'm just going to do the, the inside. So, whoa, there. Not actually looking too bad, to be honest. I don't know if you can, uh, he's not looking, not, just a little adjustment there perhaps. Okay, so. Yeah, I'm working on a leech treadle wheel, known as a leech treadle wheel, or a leech kick wheel in some circles. I've actually left this a little longer than I, I meant to. Yeah, our cat got sick. I'm not quite sure what happened, but we've been to the vet a couple of times and had the, the the stress that goes along with dealing with you know when your when your family pet is is sickly. Let me just try to just uh, so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, let's just bring that in there for a little bit of detail. So this is, at the moment, for those who are not familiar with pottery terminology, well, this is actually what, what we describe as leather hard. Um, another term we use is cheese hard. So I'm gonna use this guy and basically use it to Yeah, this clay had a bit of grog in it, so as I'm using it, it's kind of, it's pulling up the grog a bit. What I mean is that it's catching on the tool and then leaves a... All right. Yeah. Whoop, come off. I think he's looking fine actually. So now I've got to get this down, upside down, to trim this foot, you see, onto, onto here. But I need something wider, hence I'm going to use that, this guy. But I've got a problem, haven't I? So let's see if we can, let's pull back the camera, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can sort that problem out. Yes, it's nice to, when we have a problem, it's nice to see if we can figure out how to do something, isn't it? Okay, so, first thing we're gonna do is, um, I'm just gonna grab a, a wadge of clay here, okay, and put it on there, and what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna throw, throw a pad of clay. So it's going to center up this piece of clay. Like that. Push it down so as to flatten it out.
So I'm just flattening it, widening it. Now I don't want that to be, I want it to be slightly, yeah, dipped in the middle, that's okay. Good. And, yeah, it's turned out to be a nice, well, reasonably nice evening. It was like stormy earlier on with a lot of rain. So I'm just going to do this. That then lets me get the bat off the wheel more easily. Um, so first I'm going to take this bat and I'm just going to put it on there like that. And now I'm going to just tap center that like this to get it into the middle. Like so. All right. A bit. Okay, now just pat it like this with the wheel going around. Okay, okay, now I'm going to take another wood of clay. Got to raise it up, you see, everything. Now, if I was doing this on an electric wheel, of course, the, let's say a Shimpo, the plastic slot tray, I could just simply remove it and then I wouldn't have this problem, would I? doing this the clay is not too hard this is a little harder than I would like all generally making plates and things you don't want to have stiff clay you want to have your clay a little on the soft side it just makes it easier to feed the clay out as it were like I'm doing now. Let's just test that. You don't want it high in the middle, you see, as you can appreciate. Otherwise, the the bat will rock. The next the next round bat that I'm going to put on will rock. All right, so something like that. I think that'll do. Okay, like that. I'm just going to clean off my hands a touch. I thought I'd just show you how to do that. I hope it'll work. <laughs> okay, so next, take this ball. Put that over there for the moment. Right, let's take this back. I'm hope. Hoping now that that yeah it's just it's just above here you see, which is what I wanted. I'm going to take that. We're going to tap center. That's pretty on center, isn't it? Learn to tap center, folks. Do this when you bang bang right in the middle. Don't bang here off center, because what you'll do is you'll make the, the bat go down, and then as it goes round, it'll be going like this. So when you do this, hit in the center. It should then, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, says he. In fact, it's, it has 
So I'm just holding my finger and finding where the, the high spot is and then giving it just a gentle tap to when you when you find your when you feel your finger touching all the way round then you're good yep that's good all right so let's let's apply a little water are we in the picture are we in the picture oh yeah we are aren't we pretty much good let's apply a little water here to the back like that Tomorrow I've got to I've got to drive to Boston tomorrow, which is about six hours. Six hour drive. I'm doing a a thing at Mud Flats. So if you are in the Boston area, Mud Flats is hosting um, the Mudflats Pottery Studio is hosting Tomu Hamada, Tomu Hamada, and myself uh, during the day there doing a, a joint workshop. Tomu Hamada, who is the grandson of Shoji Hamada, famous Japanese potter, and my grandfather Bernard Leach, famous. English potter and but great friend of Shoji Hamada. So this is a this is a repeat of what we did a couple of years ago in Philadelphia. He's coming over from Japan and we're having this this joint workshop which is really the meeting of East and West again. Um, yeah, it was like over a hundred years ago that my grandfather and Shoji Hamada struck up a, 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 a friendship which lasted all their lives. In fact, Shoji Hamada died on January the 5th, 1978, which was my granddad's birthday, which was rather, rather nice. Okay, so you can see, you've seen what I've done. I've sent it up this pot onto this wider bat. So what we want to do now is, is, is trim this away. Now looking at it, I realize that when I threw this, my goodness, I threw it on rather a narrow foot. I'm surprised actually it didn't even collapse, really, to be honest. Um, I'm going to use one of these kind of tools, which is ideal for a larger piece like this. Hopefully it's going to do its job. You can hear the 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 grog, the sand, which is going to kick up. You see, somewhat. I'm going to lose a lot of my trimmings on the floor. I think. Yeah. This is what I call a strap trim tool, which is which is great for for trimming this kind of thing. You see, I'm trying to get a nice. Let's bring the camera da down a bit on the tripod if we can. Um, so I want you to see the profile. You see, yeah, like that. Say, for example, just hold it there, chum. Right, so. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm looking for the this shape. You see, not a lot of, not a lot to take off though in terms of the width because already narrow in the foot. I mean. It, not too narrow, but it doesn't want to go much. Yeah. I'm 
going to switch now to this tool. So yeah, this is clay that's had, I've kneaded in some children's play sand actually. It's made it a bit rough, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to give it a few taps. I'm going to take it off the wheel now because I want to, always a good idea, you know, just give it a feel through the, through the side wall here um, for, for thickness, you see. that. Okay, we're going to reapply a little water there just to the rim and drop him back down on there. Recentering him up now. My eye fixed here on this cut edge that I've already cut here. Okay, because that's the one I want to center back to. Okay, now some downward pressure. Pressure. Okay, and now cutting away a bit more here. La la la. Dee 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 dee. Let's bring the camera up a bit so you can get now a uh, view from above. Up there, like that, and then let's just zoom that there a touch or something like that. Okay. Camera tripod leg is very close to my 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 wheel, and I hope hope I don't knock it for six. Yeah. So this kind of wheel, you see, I can get very good control of speed. I don't want too much speed when I'm doing this. So somebody may ask, well, why, why did you add the children's play sand, Simon? It makes it all look very rough and I'm not sure if I like it. Well, it, it, does, it does make it appear a bit rough and toothy. Um, I don't mind it though, I quite like it when it's like that. And it, it really what you're doing is you're sort of introducing a bit of character into the clay body. I find that this clay body is rather smooth. It does have grog in it, but it's still... It's catching on my apron there, it's making that noise. So paring away the clay, you see, because it's just at that right hardness for to be able to to 
do that. Okay, oh, on the camera tripod. Yeah, always, always break your corners. Um, never leave a pot with a corner uh, here. That looks, doesn't look like it's in focus, does it? Yeah, always, never leave sharp angles on your feet. So, take your trim tool and just break the corner like that. You find it does two things. One is, one is it looks better because you're relating that edge there to this edge here. So you tie them together visually. That's one thing. But the other thing is, of course, it has a practical, a practical aspect and that is, Uh, a sharp corner there is going to be very, very susceptible to chipping, which, which we don't want, of course. All right, I think that is it. Let's step back the camera a little bit, pull it back, um, and have a look and see if we like what we've done. So, I like the toothiness of the look. I don't like it too much when you hit a, a piece of grog and it, it drags a long line all the way around it. I don't, I don't know if I care for that so much. Okay, let's give him a couple of taps like this. Stop the wheel and now there he is. All right. Put him back on the wheel. Always a good idea when you've trimmed something face down. Recenter it back up and take some water in your hand like this. Get him approximately on the center. He hasn't got to be smack on. And I'm just re going over this this edge here that has been face down on the back just to freshen it up a bit so because it can it can look a little a little tatty can't it? If you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. All right. There he is. He's finished. I think I'm happy with him. So, yeah. That's it. And now all we need to do is put a, a seal on the bottom. Um... Yeah, if you don't have a seal, make yourself a seal. Don't be a scratcher. Too many scratches out there. So I, I usually have two seals, one my seal and then I put USA on it. Because that's where I live at the minute. Okay, so putting my hand on the inside opposite where I'm going to seal it. Okay, and then take, take the seal and apply the seal. into the clay, like that, once and then for the USA, like that, is that coming out there, I don't know, it's kind of nice to have put where it's been made. I suppose I should put Milheim, shouldn't I? That's me. Yeah. Okay. 
thanks for watching folks and yeah as I said to you tomorrow that's I'm driving up and it'll be on the 1st of June which is Thursday mud flats pottery studio with Shoji not Shoji Shoji Hamada's grandson Tomu Tomu he and I will be there so if you're in that neck of the woods I think it's an open event so I, I don't know you may have to contact mud flats pottery studio I don't know what they're charging for people to, to be there but I will have pots there and tools for sale as well and yeah if there's any of you out there youtubers or steamians steamians <laughs> you know who I mean steamians yeah if you're in that neck of the woods then drop by and say hi it's always nice to meet people who you sort of uh, correspond with online and actually meet them in the flesh I think yeah so apart from that my website simonleachpottery.com we have workshops ongoing here I've got some vacancies I think in June a couple at least or even not three maybe June 24th and 25th I think and then into July I have a couple of workshops there as well and they both I think have got uh, free spaces but check on my website on the workshops page it'll give you the schedule and you can have a look see if there's a workshop there that suits you well that's about it folks thank you for joining me and as always keep practicing and I will see you in the next video hasta luego